Hi, and welcome back to another edition of BZ Theory. So today we're going to continue from where we left off. So we've been talking about these things called DFAs. And actually one thing I should mention is I'm gonna try working with the black background and white text and try to make this a little better for those who are watching these videos at night and not having their eyes completely blinded by my videos. I don't wanna be responsible for people being blinded by my videos. Fair enough. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about DFAs today, just as we have been doing before, and we talked about these things called the regular operations, and those were union, concatenation, and star. And we, what we were able to show is closure properties of the regular languages for DFA. So DFAs correspond to regular languages, and what we were able to show is that for union, at least, we were able to get closure under union for regular languages, and that was due to the product construction. And the idea there was that we simulated two DFAs at exactly the same time. But we haven't shown that for concatenation in star. So what we want to at least motivate is, can we actually do concatenation or star for DFAs? And I claim that it's actually quite difficult. And also, we only really need to focus on concatenation because star is harder in some sense than concatenation is because star involves a whole bunch of concatenations and this just involves one. So let's just see. Let's just have let A and B be regular languages. And let's just see if we can show that A concatenated with B is regular also. So we don't know that this is true. We haven't shown that this is true. But how would we show that this is true? Well, what we know is that if A and B are regular languages, there are two DFAs, DA and DB, I'll call them, uh, DFAs for these two languages, A and B, because that's what it means to be a regular language. There is a DFA for uh, these languages. So what we would want to do for this question is we want to create a DFA, maybe call it D, for A concatenated with B. That's, that's what we would definitely want to occur, but we haven't shown that this, this is true yet. So how would we be able to show this? Well, we could try doing the idea of trying to split up the string because if you recall a concatenated with b is the set of all strings w x such that w is in a and x is in b so the thing to realize here is that the dfa d right here let me switch to green the dfa d is going to receive a string like this it's going to get a string wx, or, or some string that might be of the form wx, where the first piece is in A and the second piece is in B. But here's the problem. The DFA D is just getting a bunch of characters. It doesn't necessarily know what part, if any, belongs to the first part of the string for, for A. Let me turn off notifications. And the second part also belongs in B. If there was some kind of separator in between these two pieces, then it might be possible for the DFA D to be able to figure this out. And in fact, it would be possible if we did put an explicit character in there, but I won't go into that. But here, we're, we're just trying to address the problem of concatenation. Can we get concatenation with DFAs? Well, it seems quite difficult because Here's a naive approach where we take the a DFA, let's just call this DA, which is the DFA for A up here. And note that this doesn't have to be, there's no unique DFA for A, we're just picking one. So maybe it has a start state and some final states and whatnot. And there's a DFA DB for B. It also has a start state and final states. and if we wanted to recognize this language, the concatenation language, well, that means that 
to get through the first part right here, to read this W part, W has to be an A, which means that the DFA D sub A has to accept the first part, and the second DFA DB has to accept the second part, because otherwise it wouldn't be in this concatenation language, because if one of the two pieces wasn't accepted by its corresponding DFA, then it wouldn't be in here in the first place. So that means that the W part, whatever it is, has to be accepted in this part right here, and it must land in one of the final states over here, and the X part must uh, be read through this DFA right here. But remember, we can't just read a part of the string and then switch to a completely different machine and then read the rest of it. We need to have a single machine to read the entire string all at once. So a naive approach might be, okay, well, that means that we gotta start here because the A language is first. The strings that I have to accept according to A have to be first, and then the B ones have to be second because X is the second part. So then that means that we gotta start in this start state over here, go through this machine somehow, then somehow jump over to here, and then go through this machine and end up in one of those final states. So that means that I shouldn't make these two, these states final anymore, and leave these ones to be the final ones, but, so that's no problem whatsoever, but the problem is, how do I actually go over to here? But, the, and the main reason is, well, this DFA already has every transition that it could ever use, because it's a DFA. Every one of its states has every possible transition. So if I add another one like this, then I'm going to be breaking the rules of what a DFA actually is. But even more importantly, even if that wasn't an issue, notice that there's no separator here between the W and the X part. And in order to take a transition in a DFA, I must consume a character. But if I consume the first character of this X part right here, then this DFA DB isn't really reading the X string, it's reading the X string minus the first character. So it won't actually accept this same strings that it normally would have because it's starting one character later. So that tells us that obviously this approach cannot possibly work. But a red herring is that just because this approach doesn't work, that does not show that every possible approach cannot work. So some of my students say, okay, well, this approach doesn't work, Therefore, regular languages are not closed under concatenation. That's not true because, well, one, we're going to show that eventually. But two, just because this one approach doesn't work doesn't imply that every other possible approach doesn't work. Okay? So those are the main reasons why DFAs are kind of difficult for concatenation. And for star, it's the same idea. We would need to go through the machine a whole bunch of times, but in order to go from a final state back to the original state so that we can go through it again, we're either breaking the fact that it's a DFA to start with because we're adding a, a transition, but also we got to read something on that transition because it's a DFA. So that's one of the reasons why DFAs are hard to use with concatenation in star. And one thing that some people ask me is, why do we even focus on these? Well, why don't we just say we're going to stick with union and not even worry about anything else? The main reason is you can think of these as breaking up the, the problem into subproblems. For union, if you have something or something else, then if you solve both pieces, then you can combine them together. Concatenation, you can think of like multiplication with numbers. If you have two numbers, and you multiply them together, if you know in this setting how to solve each of the original numbers, or you can think of them as languages here, if you know how to solve the original two languages, then I can combine them in this way. And for star, it's the same story. And another amazing fact that we'll eventually see is that 
every regular language can be composed of unions, concatenations, and stars, some number of them. So that's the reason why we care about these, because they break up this complicated problem that we don't know necessarily how to solve into simpler problems that we do not know how to solve. So I hope that was interesting. Hopefully the format is a little better with this uh, black background and, and uh, white color for the pen. Uh, leave a comment below if you uh, were able to, uh, if you have any other ideas about how to solve this. Um, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps with the growth of the channel, especially commenting. Commenting really helps, so I, I would appreciate if you can leave a comment below. You can also support this channel on Patreon if you want to contribute additionally and join our Discord server. So I hope that was interesting. I'll see you all next time.